How's it? My name is Jason. I'm a registered polysomnographic technologist, and I would like to redo uh, one of my videos on Sleepyhead. So, Sleepyhead is a software program that you can use with your existing CPAP machine. You have to have a specific uh, type of machine, but with it, you can uh, pop out your SD card and you can use it to read the data. The program is free, and I just want to go over how to use the program. So, first, we'll do a brief showing of how to actually download it. So the first thing you're going to do when you to download uh, Sleepyhead is go to SourceForge. And you can see it already comes up, SourceForge.net. Um, in the search bar, just type in Sleepyhead and enter. And here it is. You're going to see it's like a lamb. Open that up. So right here is the button. You can download it. Just following the instruction, it's pretty easy. But here are the features. It tells you exactly what it supports. So if you have a Philips Respironix System 1 machine of any kind, you can use it. A ResMed S9, an AirSense 10 CPAP machine, Double Bliss, IntelliPAP, Fisher Paykel, Icon, and it even does um, oximetry, the specific kind, the contact. Um, so if you have any of those, you can use this uh, program and it will work splendidly. So once you finish downloading it, you're going to see this lamb icon. I'm just going to double click on that. I have this um, person already in here, but what you would normally do is select on new profile. You would create the profile, you just name it whatever you want, and then um, from there you'd have to import data. Right now we already have data imported, so we're going to select CS, select user, um, if and if you didn't have anything in here, it would look like um, like no data. So what you'd have to do is go into File, and you're going to go into Import Data. Um, what's going to happen is going to be looking for a location to import data from. So at this point, you need to have your SD card connected to your computer somehow, and so it's scanning data cards right now because um, it thinks it knows where it is, but I don't have anything in there. So what you can do is you can just open up your computer in the browse and find it on my computer, wherever you have it. Um, it, it should be in here somewhere because it would be in an SD card plugged into your machine. Uh, what you do once you're in there is select the file folder. Um, it's pretty easy. There should only be one file folder. As of right now, we already have data points. And so once you import it, you're going to see something like this. Anything that's highlighted in the blue color means that there's data for it. Anything in black, there's no data for it. So it makes it pretty easy. So as far as looking at your data, um, that's pretty much what everyone wants to do with this, is look at their data, see how they're doing. Um, and you can see this one looks pretty good. Everything's pretty smooth. Um, that one's looking rough. That one looks very nice. Let's pick one that's not so nice. Here's a good one. It's kind of what you're looking for for the most part. Everything's pretty smooth and they're just kind of tracking along with no events really marked. You can also see the pressure looks pretty good. It's just steady. So they're, they're clicking away pretty well. So here's a good night of some data that looks, I mean, it's not bad. 5.78 isn't horrible, but we can see that there's some events here that we might want to take a closer look at. So first things first, let's arrange our screen so it looks a little um, appealing. What you have down here is all these different um, parameters that we can look at. AHI, this is a trend of what it's doing throughout the night as it's making calculations. You have um, the expiration time, inspiration time, minute ventilation, event flags, um, you know, tidal volume, respiratory rate. A lot of these, I've already arranged this one. What we're looking for, what we'd like to have to be seen that's actual um, function, I'm going to call it functional data, stuff that we can do something with is the flow rate because this is the breathing pattern. The pressure of your CPAP machine is important. The leak rate of your machine is important. And that is pretty much it. As far as snore, and it does, it, I would leave that up there so that it's visible, but it's probably the least important of them um, being visible. This one's not important at all, really. This one's not important at all, really. This one's not important at all, really. N none of these are anything that you, know, you can do stuff with. If you do need any of these down here, you should be talking to a doctor and not looking at this stuff on YouTube. 
Um, so here we have it. Um, if, if you don't have, say you wanted something down there, you just drag it up. So I have respiratory rate that I brought up. What we want to do is take it, it's in the middle of all this stuff, we want on top, so we just, you can see this icon turns into a little hand, my cursor turns into a hand, left click, and we're going to drag it down out of there. So get it so that you have flow rate, pressure, leak rate, snore, the event flags always remain on top, and here we go. So now that we have our screen set up the way we want it, we can actually uh, look at stuff. So this up here is the entire night, this represents the entire night pressure, this is the entire night throughout it. If we want to look at little segments, there's a couple things we can do. We can either put our cursor over a spot. We can look at these. These are being marked as obstructive apneas right here because you can see down here, obstructive apneas is that light blue color. So if we go up here and we left click on it, it's going to zoom in on that spot. And this is one of the good reasons of why you would want to look at your data and evaluate it, we can see here that those actually aren't obstructive apneas at all. Uh, there's still breathing going on. So this was mismarked by the machine. So that's nice. I mean, that would bring the AHI of your machine down lower. So instead of freaking out about it, you would uh, probably not do much about it at all. So in now we can zoom back out by right clicking. We can also push on the down arrow on our computer. You can do up arrow, it'll just do it right in the center though, but as far as zooming out, it's easier to probably hit the down arrow like that. So you can also, another way to do that is you can left click and then drag across it, and that'll zoom into that area, and we release it and it zooms in. So we push the down arrow again, we can zoom out, or we can, you know, actually we can look at these. We'll look at these as saying these are rearrows, we'll zoom in on those. And we can see it's actually pretty steady. Why it's calling that Arira, I have absolutely no idea. That is just the way these machines are. We'll, we'll mark stuff that doesn't make sense sometimes. Let's go ahead and zoom back out by pushing on the down arrow. So we can also do this, apply the same thing down here to the uh, breathing if you don't want to do it up here. You see a segment here, pretty much the same as doing it up on top, but you know some people prefer that. You can also do it with the leak. Time, like you can say, oh, I had a bunch of events right here. What was the leak like during those times? Was it leak related? And you can see, oh, no, probably not. Anyway, that's how you zoom in and you zoom out. What you can also do is on the flow rate, this is the breathing, you can get a pretty good chunk here. You can try to fit it to whatever size you want. And then using your left arrow, you're gonna, you can move along throughout the night and you can actually see what your breathing is doing. So that's it for this one night. If for some reason you wanted to take a screenshot of it, if you said, oh my gosh, what is happening here? Um, should I worry about this stuff? So I might have a Windows 8 machine. Um, I would print push down on the Windows button and the print screen button, which is just to the right of my F12 button. So I push and hold both of them, and you saw it kind of do that little flashy thing. So now I know that I can go in and actually look at those in my screenshots, which is going to be in, well, I guess wherever you have them. Mine is in the C folder. So on my computer, I go into, um, well, my computer, and then I need to go into pictures, double click there. And then I would go into screenshots, and you can see that the screenshot I just took is in here. So then what I would want to do, I could do any number of things with this. If there's any personal data on there, you can go ahead and um, uh, delete it or cross it out using your any software that you may have. You can crop it to take off personal information, but then you can save it as a JPEG. Probably already is saved as a JPEG or a PNG. Um, then you can use that and you can upload that onto like my website. Uh, okay, so we're in here and uh, if I wanted to post it, I could just go in the new topic. I could put, I'll put test post. You can write anything you want right here like blah, blah, blah. Write whatever you have to say. And then now you're going to go down here underneath your post into browse. And you just basically need to find where you put that. 
where you put the uh, screenshot, which is in Remember Pictures, Screenshots, and right there, you open it. It just downloaded it here, but then you need to add the file. Uploads in progress, and there it is. It's in there. Then when you hit submit, you would see it. So in addition to the daily tab, which I think is probably the most helpful, you can select from the statistics. This gives you, there you can see leak statistics, pressure statistics, as well as the changes to your prescription settings at the bottom here. You can also select on the overview. Overview will tell you day by day. It'll give you a gross calculation of everything. So you can see AHI right here. We had a, on August 8th, the purple shows that there are a lot of central apneas that it detected. The light blue is a lot of obstructive apneas, and then the darker blue is hypopneas. So you can just kind of track your data throughout the months, really, in the year. You can see how much this person used it during that time. Um, you can see you know, uh, sessions, how long people used it, what times, if you went to bed at the same time, uh, pressure changes throughout all those, those days, um, including uh, leaks. Have your leaks improved or gotten worse over time? Um, this is a great way to track you know, uh, mask changes or the way you're putting your mask on, uh, as well as your therapy overall. Um, and lastly, we have the help browser. And in here is, um, it just gives you some information that you may be interested in. And that's that. That was a lot of information to take in. So I'm going to go ahead and do a separate video on how to evaluate the results of Sleepy Ahead or look at the data and how to, how to decide what's real and what's not. So look for it. I'll call it probably something like Sleepy Ahead, uh, data evaluation, data review, something like that.